Good evening from New York. This is Monday, November 29th, 708 days until the 2012 presidential election. Tomorrow, the president will negotiate with Republican leaders Boehner and McConnell at the White House. Republican leaders who will not extend unemployment benefits unless they are paid for, but who want tax cuts for the rich without paying for them, and who want to neuter what's left to neuter at the White House. In our fifth story, as unemployment benefits for 2.5 million out-of-work Americans will begin expiring within 48 hours, President Obama today proposed a two-year pay freeze for civilian federal workers. That freeze would not apply to the armed services. As for the patriots that President Obama said the freeze would affect... The hard truth is that getting this deficit under control is going to require some broad sacrifice. And that sacrifice must be shared by the employees of the federal government. Today I'm proposing a two-year pay freeze for all civilian federal workers. A Republican call in June for a similar pay freeze had been met with derision by many Democrats, with even Senator Max Baucus of Montana calling that prior Republican proposal arbitrary and restrictive. Democrats' frustration now extending to their continued lack of cohesion on the Bush tax cuts. Some Senate Democrats hoping to recapture the message by adopting the proposal of Senator Schumer of New York. Quoting Senator Schumer, there's a strong view in the caucus that if we make the dividing line $1 million, it becomes a very simple argument. We are forgiving the middle tax uh, class a tax break, therefore tax cuts for millionaires. But the assistant majority leader, Senator Dick Durbin, has suggested that a compromise with Republicans should be broadened to include the extension of jobless benefits. We do have unemployment running out. By Christmas, two million Americans will lose their unemployment benefits because they expire. We should not be worried about the discomfort of the wealthy, but the fact that there are many people struggling to survive every day now because they have no job. A man who just got a job has become the newest spokesman for the Republican policy on this, the I'm in the lifeboat, permit me to hit you over the head with the or policy. Senator Kirk of Illinois. We should extend the Bush tax cuts and make sure that we don't have a double dip recession. And I have the honor to be the first of 95 new Republicans coming to the Congress, fiscal conservatives to help right our ship of state. But by Senator Kirk's reasoning, the multi trillion dollar Bush tax cuts should be extended, while unemployment benefits should not be extended unless the unemployment benefits are paid for. You could extend it if you found a way to pay for it, and I voted for that in the past. But these proposals to extend unemployment insurance by just adding it to the deficit are misguided. And as a progressive group places a TV ad against the Bush tax cuts, it must still mystify Democrats that they can't come up with a united, um, unified message on this when only one-third of Americans favor a tax cut extension for the wealthy. That according to the latest CNN poll. And when budget gurus like President Ronald Reagan's former budget director David Stockman are now calling for a return to sanity on this issue of tax cuts. To get the economy back to health, we're going to have to reset uh, some basic parameters of our economy, and one of them in this environment uh, would be a higher tax burden on the upper income than a conservative like myself would ordinarily uh, advocate. Only took him 28 years to figure that out. Let's bring in staff writer for the Washington Post, Newsweek Magazine columnist, MSNBC contributor Ezra Klein. Ezra, good evening. Good evening, Keith. Why are they bothering to have McConnell and Boehner come in to negotiate with the president tomorrow? Because it would seem if left alone by themselves, Democrats would happily negotiate away all their own positions anyway. I mean, it would seem Republicans are absolutely superfluous to the equation now. At times it does seem that way. You do have a lot of... I remember a couple of months ago, John Boehner came out and said, look, I would love to get the tax cuts for the rich extended, but if I can, of course I'll do the middle class tax cuts. And a lot of observers of this debate looked at that and said, well, that's over. It's done. Mm -hmm. And then within a couple of weeks, Democrats were arguing among themselves about what position they would bring into the tax cut debate. There is a fascinating thing that happens with Democrats where they do not appear to understand when they have the leverage. In the tax cut debate, they have the leverage. They have the more popular position, and they're the only ones really with the power to pass a tax cut extension, but they don't use it. Can't accept win for an, for an answer. Uh, the, the unemployments for people who've been out of work for at least six months ex begin to expire tomorrow. Uh, as Think Progress notes, Congress never in the last 40 years allowed the extended unemployment benefits to expire when the rate, when the unemployment rate was above 7.2. And the latest poll shows the public in favor of extending these benefits. So why, why are the Democrats tying it into the, to the Republican uh, tax cuts for the wealthy in order to get it done? Couldn't it get done on its own? 
Because the unemployed aren't politically powerful, is the sad answer of that. But the other piece of this, and man, it's one of those days when I wish I brought a graph. Yeah. It's really important people understand the tax cuts for the rich, when you put everything together, that's about $4 trillion over 10 years. The unemployment benefits are a couple tens of billions. The difference in what we are putting on the deficit is enormous. When you run a graph of these two things, you can't see the unemployment benefits on it. The line is so small. The idea that there are people walking around this town saying, I'm a fiscal conservative and I can do one of these the tax cuts for everyone but not the other, is unbelievable. And it's even more unbelievable given that if anybody really needs some help right now, it's people who are unemployed amidst 10% unemployment, not people who are making $500,000 amidst one of the deeper downturns we've had in the nation's history. What about uh, people who work for the federal government and, and the president's proposal for a two-year pay freeze for civilian federal workers, which he threw out before tomorrow's meeting? Did he gain something that nobody else can see in that in terms of the negotiations with Boehner and McConnell? The White House has a tendency to do unilateral bipartisanship. They, yeah. they, they compromise with themselves and they say they made a compromise, but Republicans who didn't buy into it don't give them any credit. You can make the argument that maybe they're preventing something worse. A two-year pay freeze is better than a three-year pay freeze and better than a pay cut. On the other hand, though, you legitimize an argument that federal workers should be paid less than they currently are. And while the uh, Obama administration has big regulatory policies coming out, health care reform, financial regulation, and they need good regulatory talent, they're making a very high-profile claim that it is not a great time to become a federal worker. So that should worry people who worry about the success of these initiatives that are passed in the, that have been passed in the last two years. I mean, we're going to start paying less for, for the government and the people in it. We're going to wind up with, well, I, I guess more of the people we elected in November. But is there anything positive out of the Schumer idea on the tax uh, cut threshold to make it a million dollars? It's been mentioned before, and he's mentioned before. Is it a non-starter, or do they think that's, that's a great idea, or where does that stand? It's better than nothing and still bad. The, what I'd say about Schumer is, is simply this, that in the campaign, Barack Obama tied his hands behind his back by saying, we will never raise taxes on people making um, less than 250000 That was very low, that was very high, rather, given the size of our deficit. To then raise that up to a million dollars, you're creating such a, protect, such a small class of people in this country who can be taxed when we need to begin changing the way the tax code works to get the deficit under control, that you're really constraining your options. It is not a, it is not a great idea to say that only only people making seven figures can have tax increases. We have historically low taxes right now, a historically high deficit. We may need to make hard choices in the coming years. These are not good principles to enshrine into our rhetoric. Meanwhile, freeze the salaries of people who are and who have jobs and would conceivably not now can't spend the, the raises they don't get. Uh, the Washington Post, Ezra Klein, always a pleasure, Ezra. Thank you. Thank you.